All right, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 and the Mobile Studio Pro 16 and be going over every single issue that both of these devices have. Um, they're definitely not perfect and they both have their problems right now. I'm not sure if they'll get fixed. I'd like to assume they will, but hopefully this will help someone decide if it's time to buy these or not, or maybe you should wait a little while until these bugs get fixed. So I'm gonna start with the Cintiq 16 and then I'm gonna go over all the issues with it and then I'm gonna jump over to the Mobile Studio Pro 16 and go over all the issues with that. So I'm gonna to cut to the Cintiq 16 right now and I'll get started on the issues. So the first issue that I think is worth mentioning is the wavy line problem right now. When you draw diagonal lines at a slow speed, they are wavy. I have tried this in different software, I've tried this in different operating systems and I've tried different drivers and as well as a slew of other things. Nothing seems to fix this. So this is almost a deal breaker as far as anything goes. This does not happen on my Mobile Studio Pro. I know wavy lines are kind of an issue with everything, but someone had mentioned to me that they seem pretty uh, extreme on this and they're right. There's a huge issue with wavy lines and I don't know how to fix it. It seems like it's on the driver end of things. So at this point, it's just really a waiting game to see if Wacom pushes a fix for it. So next up is these touch buttons at the top. This isn't something that I've had an issue with personally, but I've had a lot of people ask me if you can shut them off. You cannot shut these buttons off. So if you accidentally hit one, well, you just have to not hit it because you can't turn them off. All right, now back to problems with the resolution. As you can see here, my tablet is locked in at 1440p even though I'm hooked up through USB-C directly. Well, why is this happening? I thought that it was a 4K no matter what if you're hooked up through USB-C. Well, the reason it's like that is because what I did here was I just unplugged the cable and switched the port that it was plugged into. For whatever reason, the Wacom does not tell anyone this for some strange reason, but you cannot use 4K unless you're using the top port, the top left port on the device. So I plugged in the top left, I get 4K again, but this is really a communications issue more than anything. Nowhere does it say you cannot use this port for 4K, yet it is the only port that works for 4K on the device. Just keep that in mind moving forward. Okay, so although I think the wavy lines is the biggest issue with this device right now, I wouldn't say it's unusable, but it's clearly something that shouldn't be happening and it is kind of interfering with the whole drawing experience on this device. The issues do not stop there. There are other smaller issues that I would say could be overlooked if this wavy line issue wasn't there, but everything compounded sort of makes this device almost, I would personally say, a do not buy for most people. Um, the issues starting with beyond that are the 4K not really working consistently. You know, I spoke about it in my last video about this, but it's tough to get this device to go into 4K. I don't know why, but sometimes it'll turn on, it won't be in 4K. Sometimes you'll have to reset it to get into 4K. And on Mac, I had to use an application just to get it to go into 4K, which was so such a pain to do that. But you, I had to do it for some reason. Um, and Aside from 4K, just getting the device to work sometimes can be a major headache. I know in Windows, I had an instance where the device wasn't even being recognized. I had to uninstall and reinstall all the Wacom drivers just to get it to recognize the, the device again. And sometimes that will still happen, but usually shutting off the tablet and turning it back on will resolve that. But there are still some other issues apart from these ones. Uh, the fans are kind of a problem. The volume doesn't bother me. I honestly don't even notice it. I have had people that say it's kind of loud. Personally, I don't think the fans are too loud, but the problem with the fans is that, as I mentioned uh, in my last video, the back of the Wacom's uh, device has the ventilation on it. So if you're buying a, a stand for the device that covers these ventilation holes, then you're gonna have some major overheating problems on the device that could lead to it uh, possibly breaking, uh, possibly just shutting off. I'm really not gonna push to see what happens if I cover up those holes. But of course the Wacom stand doesn't have this issue because it doesn't cover the back of the device, but it is not out yet. So 
It's kind of annoying considering that they don't sell a stand, it doesn't come with the device, and the ones you have to buy, you have to be careful that they aren't covering the back of the device. Um, the power situation is a little annoying on the Cintiq, I'm pointing to my Mobile Studio Pro, but uh, on the Cintiq, the, uh, the fact that you have to plug in a separate power source and it can't be powered off the laptop is kind of annoying. I'm assuming because of the fans on the back, it consumes a little bit more power than a normal uh, screen would because I know a lot of screens can just be powered by laptops. This one can't. So I almost felt like that was a little misleading because I did buy the device thinking all I would need is that one cable. Um, other things would just be Wacom not being clear in general with this device. There is nowhere that it says that the Wacom Link doesn't support 4K, although it doesn't out of the box unless you buy a replacement cable, something I touched on in a, on an earlier video. It just seems like in general this device has a lot of issues and nothing is really clear on what they're fixing and even if they realize there are problems as well as just as a package as um as a whole uh just presentation this device does not seem like it was ready for market honestly it's just got many many issues and there's not a lot of communication from Wacom to us on if they're being fixed or if they're working on them or even if they realize them so personally I would say hold off on the Cintiq Pro 16 at least until they get the wavy line issue fixed never mind the other issues I'm not sure how much hope there is on that so let's hop into the Mobile Studio Pro and we'll see what issues that has. All right, so here is probably the biggest issue with the device. And as you can see, I'm moving the cursor around. It's following it just fine, you know, as you'd expect it to be. But as I slow down here and move it in small increments, it doesn't really pick up on it as well anymore. It just sort of jumps to where the cursor is, not really representing where it is anymore. Now this only happens in hover cursor mode and it only happens for small movements. Now that I'm touching the screen, it's not doing it anymore as you can see, but if I lift up the cursor, it will start doing it again. So I'm not really sure why it does this, they haven't fixed it since it came out, but um, yeah, this is one of the only annoying things about this device that really keeps me from saying it's close to perfect. But there are a couple other things to keep in mind and I'll go over those now. This is something that someone brought to my attention. I didn't notice it initially, honestly, but there's a little bit of discoloration around the cursor, especially on gray backgrounds. If you look around the mouse closely, mainly to the left of it, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of, um, I don't know, dimming and lighting around it, I guess. Uh, it's kind of weird. It doesn't really bother me too much, but some people said it really bothered them, but other people may have it a little bit worse than me. It might not really show up very well in this YouTube video though. Okay, so there are a couple issues that are really difficult to get on camera with this, but there are definitely some other things worth going over. One of the problems that I was having as well, and it seems like a bunch of other people had this problem too, on the lowest brightness setting on this device, it will flicker up and down. It seems between like around 25 to 50%. Uh, I don't know why it does this but it's no, there's no way to fix it either. This is not the auto dimming that's happening here either. Auto dimming is turned off. The, I guess the way the light works in this is that it dims the device by flickering it and you notice it every once in a while on the lowest dim setting. So that is one thing that was bugging me a little bit but I kind of adjusted to it and truthfully the device isn't super bright either so Kicking the brightness down to that low, low notch is very rare for me to begin with. Uh, something else that is an issue with this is the waking from sleep. Um, people have reported different things. Personally, the issue that I've had waking this device from sleep has been the mouse isn't working anymore and I'll have to put it back to sleep, wake it back up. Another issue is these buttons on the side. Sometimes those don't work either when you wake it from sleep. Sometimes you gotta turn it back off, turn it back on, or put it back to sleep and wake it back up. Sometimes a couple times, uh, you know, you just gotta kinda keep going at it until it stops doing that really. So it doesn't happen too frequently and it seems to happen more when the device is asleep for a long time. But today when I turned it on, I did not have that issue. But yesterday when I turned it on, I did have that issue. So it's pretty intermittent as far as anything goes. Uh, the hover cursor does drift a little bit. I've kind of talked about this. It's not um, to a point that's 
annoying that's gonna get in your well it is to a point that's annoying because I do notice it but it's not gonna get in the way of anything since it's so gradual across the screen um, it's not too bad I'd stay away from calibrating this device because that really makes it much worse um, it does ask you to calibrate it once you turn the device on do not do it because that really made the drift a lot more for me for some reason I just couldn't get it to hit in that center spot on all those X's so I'd leave it the at the pre calibration settings that Wacom sends this device out um, let's see what else we have here the oh another issue that I was having not not a uh, actual glitch per se but something that was bothering me about this device the touch ring let me pick it up here and I'll uh, spin it around for you so as you can see there's a little touch ring right here and as you spin the touch ring around it'll do a function a pre-bound function that you made to it maybe it'll be making the brush size bigger or maybe it'll be I don't know zooming in on the canvas or something it's a neat feature but um as you can see there are four buttons bound to this as well and these buttons can be used to change what that zoom does so you can have this one be bound to zooming in on the canvas this one be bound to um, you know panning or uh, changing the brush size or whatever you want to be something that you can't do though is bind these to actual buttons you can only bind them to functions for when you move your finger around this ring so for example I want the left one to be undo and the right one to be uh, you know redo you can't do that so a little annoying that you can't make those buttons do what you want them to do there's no way to change them in the Wacom settings and auto hotkey you would really have to do some pretty pretty fancy stuff some pretty technical stuff to get that to work properly um, for anything else, I'd say that um, this is not too bad. The uh, charging situation is a little strange on this device. And when I say the charging situation is a little strange is that you're going to be very hard pressed and I don't think anyone has found one to date actually on charging this device with anything other than the Wacom charger that comes with it. Um, the explanation by Wacom was that the workstation uh, GPU in this needs a very high power to work which honestly uh, I mean speaking personally I don't think this device really needs that workstation GPU to begin with but it does have it so apparently to power it needs a very strong power source and I think Wacom is the only one to have made a USB-C power source that is strong enough for powering this laptop I think I might have written it down actually yeah so what they said is they need a profile 5 charger to charge this device I haven't seen one and I've tried a couple I did not check the profile on them admittedly but for example my MacBook charger will not charge this device my other USB-C chargers will not charge this device although this charger will charge my MacBook and my other USB-C devices it does not work vice versa so I think I pretty much covered everything as far as the issues I've run into with these devices um, in closing I'm, I'm going to stick with the Mobile Studio Pro. Um, just the wavy line issue alone on the Cintiq 16 is really, bo is really bothering me. And uh, I know you can draw a straight line in Photoshop by, I think it's uh, pressing shift or something like that. I know there's a hotkey and a way to do it that's not uh, manually doing out. But the issue persists in different ways, not just drawing a diagonal line like that. You know, if you're drawing a circle or something at a slow speed, that issue will be in there you will never get those really nice smooth rounded lines so um, and of course that happens in Photoshop and other applications as well so I'm gonna stick with the mobile studio pro just because the wavy lines are nowhere near as bad I'll bring a picture up right now and show a comparison of the lines I drew in my mobile studio pro and my Cintiq 16 so unfortunately I think I'm gonna have to return my Cintiq until they get the issues fixed and I'll be sticking with this so hopefully this helps someone. That's all I really have to say about this. Hopefully I'll never make another video talking about these devices and I can really start focusing on my artwork and my um, computer graphic design. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to get back at you. See you guys later.